a concept in scripture that I want to speak to you about this morning. And it's about the third day. Um, yeah, let's start with. It's a pity we don't have electricity to show the slides, but you must just write them down and read them at home. Exodus 19, the Lord, uh, verse 10, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments, and be ready for the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Exodus 19.10 And then we know that God's presence manifested on that mountain and God said that nobody is allowed to touch the mountain. If they do touch the mountain, they must be killed. Mm. His presence filled that mountain where they were filled with clouds, with thunder, with lightning, with noise. The mountain shook. Man, that must have been... Such a presence and such a thing to, to experience and to see. Mm. That, happened, that happened on the third day. And then you will see that the whole thing about how God created a nation for him and how he created a covenant with him. Yeah. So he took them from one place to another in terms of identity. And that happened on the third day. Isaiah 6 verse 1. Come let us return to the Lord. For he has torn us that he may heal us. He has struck us down and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will rise us up. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. After two days, He will revive us. After the third day, He will raise us up. And you can see now where I'm going. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. After two days, He will revive us. And the third day, He will raise us up that we may live before Him. Mm. So it's a reviving, it's a raising, and with the raising, yeah. there is Life. Yes, but you. now, let us know, let us press on to know the Lord is going out as sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that waters the earth. Mm. Rain gives life, rain sustains life. Right, rain brings refreshing, rain washes clean. Without rain and water, nature cannot exist as we know it. It's going to be one big desert. And the spirit is exactly the same. But, but when I read this, it's, it's <laughs> God always gives us clues without filling in the whole picture. He says to Israel that, I will take you to a land of milk and honey. A land of milk and honey. So you want to tell me all there is is milk and is honey. Mm -hmm. But if he says that there's honey, it means there's bees. Mm -hmm. If there's bees, there's flowers. Mm -hmm. If there's flowers, it means there's rain. And there's nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it says milk, there's cows. There's me. Blow it now, let's take it. There's there's cows. There's me. When God speaks words, it implies a whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. What is he saying? I, I I I'll take you to a place where there's milk and honey means I will take you to a place. Where everything is already ordained. Everything is in balance. 
everything is running as it's supposed to run. Awesome. So when you speak about, I will, I will revive you. I will raise you up. I will make you alive. It will rain upon you. And, and I, will, I will have showers of blessings over you. Or I will come to you like showers. And like the spring rain. That waters the earth. Do you know what he left out? Clouds. <laughs> when I read this. My mind is immediately went to Exodus. When he met on the mountain. Yes. The clouds. Yes. That filled the mountain. The thunder, the lightning. Yes. And what, what did he bring Israel on that third day? Life. Yes. He brought them from bondage. And he brought them to a place of life. And they are on, the, on their way to this promised land that is fully balanced, an ecosystem of its own. Fully supplied by God. Yes. They're on a journey. But in between, they met with God in His presence, in the cloud. Mm. And in this cloud, it's like powerful. And here He comes. And to me, it was the same picture, yet He left the clouds on. And I wonder sometimes if He allows us to have, to fill it in with our imagination. Mm. So that we can become part of his word. That's the support. Yeah. Genesis. Remember when um, Joseph was sold by his brothers. Sold to Egypt. <coughs> he ended up in prison. He ended up being a prince. Every time you think now he arrived it was his fall again. And then eventually he became a prince and an overseer. And then his brothers came to him, the very ones that sold him. And his younger brother Benjamin wasn't with. And he had a plan to keep them there so that he could see his younger brother. Remember that story? Mm -hmm. And he had them locked up. Mm -hmm. Hear what he said to them. On the, third on the third day, Joseph said to them, Do this, and you will live, for I fear God. Hmm. The verse before said, And he put them all together in custody for three days. He had them locked up for three days. And then he went to them and said, On the third day, they, he said to them, Do this, and you will live. Maybe I take a chance with the three days. <laughs> but I see a pattern. I don't know about you. I see a pattern of, of, of restoration. I see a pattern of, of refreshing. I see a pattern of raising up out of the dead. I see a pattern of life yes, for me. There's a, a wedding in Canaan. And we all read about the wedding, and I read about the wedding, how many times, I preached about it how many times. And then last night, I googled more scriptures. I had a couple of scriptures in my mind, and, and last night I went to Google to see more scriptures about the third day. And guess what popped out that I never knew? I read over it so many times, and my fault is filter it out. John 2 verse 1 And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was the Jesus and his disciples. Mm. And now my mind is why the third day? Mm. Why would John write in and say on the third day? Yeah. What's the third day? Life. Hmm? Well, first, on a, um, on a normal week, mm -hmm. it is 
Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So, but the, the day always starting the Jewish day the, in the evening before. Mm. So our Monday evening is already the third day. That's speculation. We don't know. We don't know. Let's give it. We don't know. But my mind started with stuff like this. I went to creation. Started reading. Every day God blessed something. The third day was the first time that there was a double blessing upon something. Come on. He created, he brought separation between earth and water. Yes. He saw that it was good. Ah. And then he created the vegetation and he stepped back and he saw that it was good. Hmm. Sure. And then I went to commentaries and started reading up and I started talking about the first day of double blessing. And, and it was common for the, in the Jewish times, those times where people would get married on the third day because it was a day of double blessing. Wow. So keep in mind now, life, we, we said that it's a time where it's refreshing, where it's resurrection or life, bringing life, and a day of double blessing. Remember John, uh, Jonah? That it was a fish for how many days? Yeah. And then he was spat out. Mm -hmm. Antoinette was in town. <laughs> you know in the whale, whale, what's it called? Museum. It's a big fiberglass whale. Yeah. And uh, this group of boys, I think we were in town. This yeah, you were alone there. I can't yeah, remember. Country. And this group of boys stood in front of the whale. And the one shouted, what? Moses, 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 come no, out. Moses, <laughs> Moses, come out. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one said, No, man, don't be stupid. It's not Moses, it's Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just checking for the right man. Jonah was in the well for three days, been spat out. <laughs> And it's interesting how Jesus used the same story and he started linking it to his life. And he said that, there, I'm not going to do any signs to, to impress you and to make you believe me. There will be one sign and that will be the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was in the stomach of a whale for three days, so I will be in the grave and be resurrected on the third day mm. now Luke 24 7 Jesus said the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day raised again and they remembered his words it's interesting that Luke said that they remembered his words because when you quote that statement, Jesus said it about 20, 21 times in the Gospels. Hmm. That he will die and be raised hmm. on the third day. Hmm. 2 Corinthians 5.16 and I want to make a leap now but I will fold the leap in. 2 Corinthians 5.16 From now on therefore we regard no one according to the flesh. Mm. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh we regard him <coughs> just no longer. Therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old things passed away. Mm. <laughs> Behold the new has come. Mm. 
Before the cross, Old Testament, shadow of the things to come of which Christ is the substance. Mm. Remember? Yeah. Everything in the Old Testament pointed, pointed towards to. Christ. Yeah. The prophets, symbolism, everything pointed to Christ. Because He is the substance mm. of the shadow that is on this side. Mm. Now Christ is standing before the cross. He says, look at me. There will be one more sign. Remember Jonah? Mm. That's on the shadow side. He was in the well. He was spat up. Mm. Look at me. Be the same. Mm. He said to them, see the temple? Break it down. In three days, I will build it up again. Talking about himself, not their temple. He says, I will be crucified. And on the third day, I will be raised up. They remembered his words because he told them 21 times in three years. Mm. Well, that's how many times it was written down. Probably more. Mm. Now Paul comes and he says, <laughs> the side of the cross. Jesus died. It was a time that we know, knew him according to the flesh because he walked on earth the in the flesh. But we no longer know him according to the flesh. We know him now in the spirit. Mm. He says, as with you, I no longer know you in the flesh. Mm. I know you according to the spirit. Now that's quite a mindset when looking at a yeah. person that's alive sitting with you. That means that when I look at Regine and I decided not to see her mistakes anymore, I decided not to see her as a human being in the natural, but I willing rather to see who she is in Christ and mm. a spiritual person mm. and what she manifests in the mm. spirit. That to me is more important. That is what Paul is saying here. Do you agree? Mm. Mm. And then he comes and he says the reason why. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Yes, I know. Remember we said that in the past that that we have died with Christ and we have been raised with Him. Now the moment we come to Christ Jesus, you in an instant become a new creation. Mm. All the old things. Now our filters are telling us some of the old things mm. because we battle to see some of the mistakes we still make. Mm. And to put that in line with all the things. So our mindset tells us, no, 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 some of the things. And we create certain <sighs> theologies and, and want to break certain curses and stuff. But he says, all things have passed away. Behold, the new has come. I don't longer see you according to natural. It's the spirit. Why? Romans 8. 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Mm. How awesome is that? Beautiful. He says, because Jesus died and the spirit that rose him from the dead, yeah. meaning the spirit <laughs> Remember when God created Adam, he breathed into him and he became a living being. Yes. A nephesh, living nephesh. And he stood up, being alive. The difference is God created him perfectly. Ooh. He breathed into him and he became alive. Ooh. Here God himself came to earth. We broke his body. And there's a broken body lying there that used to live before that is now dead because we as human beings killed him. God says, it's not a problem. I gave you a promise. Like Jonah, I will breathe into him again and he will become a living being again and he rose from the grave that wow. broken body became alive 
full and now Paul comes and says, that same spirit that did it to his broken body is the same spirit that is in you, in your brokenness, that filled you and you became alive. You know how powerful that is? That means the creative power of God is living inside of you. No wonder Jesus said streams of living water will flow from your innermost being. Nothing will be impossible for you. Jesus said if you speak to this mountain and command it to move, it will move. And then he said... Nothing will be impossible for you. But we make it impossible because of our mindset, because it's not logic, because it's not according to the laws of this world. We started off saying we live in a greater world than the natural world. Part of this natural world is a spirit world. And I think it's about time that we start acknowledging that. Because something happened to Jesus' body and life returned to him and that power is in you and me. What can stop us? What can stop us? Time for one. Let's do one more verse. Philippians 3 verse 10. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection Hmm. and may share his suffering become like him in his death. Hmm. I mean, this is Paul writing to Philippian church. He had such an experience with God when he got saved the day. By the way, how many days was he blind? Mm-hmm. Three days. <laughs> and then something like peels fell off his wow. eyes and he could see. Wow. And when he started seeing, he saw things differently than before Mm. just a thought it's him that says I want to know him and the power of his resurrection I want to know my Lord and the power of his resurrection why? because there's something about resurrection there's something about the third day now I want to close off with this thought I'm not closing off, I'm closing off with a thought. (laughs) (laughs) Remember the tabernacle, this side. Shadow of the things to come. God said to Moses, build the tabernacle. This is a pattern of which is in heaven. Remember? It's a blueprint of which is in heaven. And when you build this tabernacle, there will be an outer court, there will be a holy place, and a holy of holies. What happens on the outer court? When you enter by the four openings, you enter into a place where the animals were slaughtered and and offered unto God. You walk past that to wash yourself with by the laven, which were the I love what the what the, the King James says, which was made out of the looking glasses of the women, meaning these are mirrors, the Ooh. polished bronze. So when you wash yourself, you could see yourself. Oh, there's a piece of blood here, I can clean, set to make it clean, can cleanse myself. What did God say to Moses? To two days, wash yourself, clothe yourself. Mm. Then, from there, that's the article, you go into the holy place. The holy place where you enter, it's on the left-hand side was the lampstand. The right hand side was the showbread with the wine and the bread. In front of you was the um, altar with the incense that we're not supposed to use in our churches today because it's new age. And then there's a (laughs) veil behind that. But when they went into the second portion, they had no understanding of the meaning of it. They didn't understand what the showbread the bread and the wine was for. The light makes sense because there needs to be light in this place. And the incense, well, probably to make it smell nice. Because they were still in the shadow, but it was pointing towards something. 
What happened on the second day after Jesus died? Because remember this night the offer died. Jesus died the first day. The second day was a day of insurance. Mm. Will he raise, be raised from the dead like he said? Because many before him said they were the Messiah. Mm. But this will be the truth if he's not. <clears throat> if he's raised, then it's him. If not, that's eh, another one. Mm. They have surety. They didn't understand what the elements meant. With Jesus, Jesus came and said, I'm the light of the world. I gave the light to you. I'm the bread of the world. Come and eat of me. They got the cross. Before he died, he said, this is my bread, my blood, my body that we built, broken for you. And he instituted the New Testament. Give him the, 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 the blood of the lamb. This is what you should do. He says, now you should eat in remembrance of me. The, 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 the incense, the worship, book of Revelation talk about the incense, the worship that went up before God. <coughs> but then it was a dead stop. Where the reality of this place that they walk in, not understanding exactly what everything means, stopped there. But when this side of the cross, but this side of the cross, the picture changes. Because at the cross, at the very moment of the cross, what happened? Darkness fell. There was a shaking where the rock split open. What did the centurion say? He crucified so many people. But when he saw that, something clicked in his mind. This happened to none of the others. Mm. Surely he must be the son of God. Surely. Mm. And at that moment, something crucial happened. This veil was torn. Yeah. The book of Hebrews bring the veil and the body of Christ into one. Mm. He says the veil was the body of Christ that was torn for us. And all of a sudden, this place of insurity, you can now step into the Holy of Holies that was only for certain people. It was destined for the high priest to go into that place only once a year. Mm -hmm. Moses was the only one that was invited into that place whenever he wanted to go in. Go and read it. And God said, I will meet with you between the cerebrum. So in the third day, when Jesus was risen, he brought life. Yes. What is in the presence of God? Life. Because his life. And we are invited into his life. These, remember what we said. That I will raise you up I will sustain you I will resurrect you and I will give you life yes. remember the pattern we went through and the last one is to step into God's presence Jesus rose up from the dead which means everything he said this side of the cross is true even the cross itself therefore what is going to happen this side of the cross must be true as well. Yes, amen. Then he invited us into this dimension. Now I want you to make a, a, a shift in your mind from where the third day was a day. It's now a dimension. Mm. You get that? Oh. Yeah. Any day you are allowed now to step into the presence of God. Yeah, wow. The book of Hebrews says that we can step into it with boldness because of what he did on the cross. Mm -hmm. We are invited into it. Remember, Isaiah said, Come, I will find out. I will raise you. I will shower my blessings upon you. All we need to do is to come. 
I want to challenge you that when you go to the Lord, start putting your your boxes with your filters on the side. Mm -hmm. Start to come to a place where you start experimenting with God's presence again. Kids do it all the time. They've got their own imagination, and I'm not saying that you must imagine things. And it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is stop being so grown up. Mm. Stop being so intellectual. Mm. Stop being so boxes. But come to a place where you say, Lord, I want to experience new things. I want to experience more. And I believe this. I believe this. There's one precious day that I will never forget till the day of my life. And that was the day when even my dog experienced the presence of God in my office. Johnny did not know what to do. I, I will never forget that. I was lying on the cot, praying and and, and being quiet, meditating about God's goodness and His presence and His glory and His power. And all of a sudden, I just felt the power of God <laughs> felt in that office. And, and Johnny would normally come and lie next to me when I lie on the cot. And, and he sat up and he became very restless. He didn't know what to do with this atmosphere. He sat there and then he was like, Muff! and he would move. And he would move. And he, he moved all over the office. <laughs> and I will never forget that day. Even my dog, come on. My dog experienced something about God's presence. Now I wanna I wanna say to you, if God can make a donkey talk, if yes. God can make a dog experience his presence, how much more you and I? How much more? Does he want to commune with us and allow us to experience his presence? And we don't need to talk about every experience we have. Because people will think we're crazy if we tell them all the things we experience yeah, yeah. and all the things we can experience. Some of it, what happens between my wife, I don't share with my best friends. I think it's about time that we as Christians start thinking the same. He gave us something in the natural so that we can understand the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And may God take you from the first and the second day and may He bring you into the third day. A day of double blessing. A day of refreshing. A day of resurrection. A day of power. And a day of His presence. Thank you, Lord. And may you start to live from this dimension. It's interesting when Paul writes about this. Now I go off of it. <laughs> he says, I'm not talking about this as if I have taken hold of it already but i am striving for it and i forget about what lies behind me mm. and i want to say the same to you when i speak a blessing over you about living from the perspective or the dimension of the third day i'm not saying that i've made it mm. i'm not saying but i'm striving for it and it's moments that i experience it and those moments are special to me yes because that's where we live from, from His presence, from His life, and that becomes life. And that's when it's di when these difficult times where we revisit these moments, where we realize I can do it. I can do all things because the same Spirit that rose Him from the dead is within me. And I want to tell you the same the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave is within you not the person next to you but in you and God would love to meet with you Father I thank you for every person in this place 
I thank you for every person in this place and, and those who have cried out to you, Daddy, more, 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 more. Father, I pray that you will pour out upon them abundantly. Father, those who haven't done it yet, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will draw them in a, to a desire of more. Those who are listening in a, at home, that they will have a desire for more. And Father, when we step into that desire, when we start seeking you, I know you will reveal yourself yes, to us. Yes, fill yes. us with your resurrection. <coughs> fill us with your power. Father, as Peter's whole mindset and theology had to be stripped, I pray that you will move our falters and our mindsets as well. May your name be glorified through our lives and in our lives. Father, may we experience you, not only in the knowledge of reading, but also in the tasting of you. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that you will open up dimensions within our lives that we can experience more and more and more of you. Father, and what other people call mystic experiences, but it's actually so natural in Scripture and in, in your presence, I pray that that will manifest over us. Yes, thank you, Lord. Father, as we sleep at night, I pray that you will fill us with dreams thank you, Jesus. that will guide us. I pray, Father God, that we will have angelic visitations. I pray that, that signs and wonders will manifest through our lives. And I thank you for that. Mm. Father, today we want to say there's more of you. Mm. And we want to ask you, Lord, pour out that more upon us. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Yeah.